Ryzen killed my RAM. Well, actually, the G-Skill software did. Well, not killed so much as smothered with chloroform and knocked it out until I could revive it with Intel. Well, not smothered, more like put in a coma? You know what, forget the metaphors. This video is going to be a tale about how my G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM was murdered and then resurrected. Dang it, there I go again with the metaphors. Whatever, so the tale begins with this Strix 1080 Ti video that I did a couple of weeks ago. I was overclocking the GPU, forcing it to submit to my will when all of a sudden my PC wouldn't boot. It was dead as a doornail. Postcode errors out to wazoo indicating that there was no hope left. I presumed that it was my Ryzen 7 1700 CPU and that the death may or may not have been caused by this particular drop that occurred during that overclocking session. So I contact my friends at Wootware and I'm just like, yo, my CPU is dead. I've tried it on three different AM4 motherboards, different RAM configurations. It won't work properly. And they're like, sweet, we'll get the RMA for you sorted out, no problem. Get the new CPU, same issues on all three motherboards. It turns out two of the four Trident Z RGB RAM sticks are corrupted. Somehow, some way. One of the corrupted sticks will allow the system to post if it's installed, but prevents the system from running dual channel, even though Windows recognizes that it's installed in the dim slot. Three sticks of memory, only single channel, even though the bad stick is in slot one and the good ones are in two and four. The other corrupted stick was more of the hassle. It won't let my Ryzen system boot no matter what. If it's installed, there's no hope. Even if there's good RAM installed, it hates life enough to refuse that others around it can enjoy their own existence. It's basically a giant filibuster for my machine declaring that there will be no posting of the system if it's around. But you know what? At least the RGB lights light up, which is probably the thing that hit me with confusion the most. No way the RAM could be actually dead. It lights up. Obviously, that's young, naive Brett from a couple of weeks ago. I'm now a bit wiser. So, I could RMA the RAM at this point. Wootware has been super helpful with the CPU. Got that fixed in no time, even though it wasn't the issue. Sorry, Wootware. But instead of sending the RAM back like a normal person, I needed to do some research for my own curiosity. I find out through all of the searching that I did, I'm not the only one experiencing this issue. And it has nothing to do with what motherboard I'm running. Any Ryzen system can unceremoniously vegetabilize the Trident Z RGB RAM, but not specifically any Ryzen motherboard. If you just install the RAM and leave it be, it seems like that all should be fine with the world. However, if you install either the G-Skill software or the Asus Aura software to actually adjust the lighting profiles, that's where the issues start festering. Apparently, with the way that the software handles the writing of the gorgeous lighting profiles to the sticks, it can corrupt the SPD on the RAM itself. If you have those programs installed with Ryzen, boom, you may or may not be able to boot with the RAM next time. Now to be clear, it's not guaranteed that it's an issue. Heck, even with my kit of four RGB sticks, only half were corrupted to the point of being unusable. So like 50-50 odds, not the worst in the world. Okay, great Brett, I hear you saying, you figured out the problem. How do you actually fix it? Well, it may or may not be something that you can personally do at home, but let's dive into it. So in order to fix the stupid dead RAM, you need to overwrite the SPD information that's currently on the stick. And fortunately, there's a program out there that allows you to do that. Typhoon Burner allows you to work directly with the SPD firmware on a RAM module. The free version allows you to check to see if there is any problem discovered with a cyclic redundancy check, but you gotta pay. Gotta pay. I won't pay ya. No way. Nah, now nah, why don't you get a job? but you gotta pay in order to actually write new information. Fortunately, they have an extensive database of RAM profiles so that you can download the exact one that you'll need to fix your RAM matching the rated speed and latency and the like. So I spent the $16, got the software set up and rewrote the SPD information to this RAM stick that would allow me to boot if it's installed. And wouldn't you know it, the system now properly detects that there's 24 gigabytes of RAM installed, dual channel is running fine and it's good to go. But then there's the pesky issue of that dang RAM stick that won't allow me to boot no matter what I do. I can't load into Windows to even be able to run the software to actually even fix the stick. Heck, I can't even freaking load into the BIOS, so what am I to do? What's that? Switch back to Intel because it's better and won't cause me these issues? You do have a point. While I won't be giving up Ryzen anytime soon, I did need to temporarily revert to Team Blue to get this issue resolved. 
Fortunately, I had a spare 7700K lying around, and I had a generous friend lend me their B250 motherboard. I know, I know, you can't overclock on the B250 with the 7700K, but that's not what I'm here for today. I just need to fix my gosh darn memory stick. And why don't you know it, the PC loads perfectly fine with that murderous DIMM installed. It's not officially recognized in the BIOS or by Windows, but Typhoon Burner picks it up just fine. But what's that? That $16 I spent on the software is only valid for one PC, and now that I'm on a new motherboard and processor, it counts as a second PC, and I have to buy the license again? Crap baskets. Well, I do suppose that $32 isn't as bad as not having my RAM until it gets RMA'd. Whatever. I pay again, go through the same old process, rewrite the information, and kablamo! 32 gigabytes of RAM now properly installed on my Ryzen system, all running perfectly fine at the rated speed with no issues being registered on the CRC test. And I didn't have to wait for an RMA, and I got to learn enough to make this video to hopefully help some of you out if you're experiencing the same comatose issues with your RGB RAM. As I mentioned, this may or may not be something that you'll be able to do at home. Maybe you don't have the $16 to spend on the software. Maybe you don't have a spare Intel system lying around to actually boot with a completely corrupted stick that hinders your PC from breathing at all. But I hope I can at least save some of you the horror of trying to piece together why your RAM that's lighting up perfectly won't actually work in your brand spanking new Ryzen system. It's unfortunate that it's the software that seems to be causing these issues because that means that you won't likely be able to install your own effects and customize the lighting scheme but at least the RAM does look pretty at its stock settings, so there you go. Hopefully G-Skill and Asus will be working on a solution soon with their software to make sure this doesn't happen with Ryzen in the future, but at the same time, you can just risk it for the biscuit because you might have a 50-50 shot of actually getting your lighting set up with no issues. But if you do encounter problems, at least you now have the capacity to solve it by yourself. Well, I'm gonna wrap this video up there. Big thanks to Wootware for not only supplying me with the 32 gig kit of Trident Z RGB RAM in the first place, but then also being total bros about RMAing the CPU and being willing to help me out with the RAM RMA as well, which is one of the big bonuses of partnering with Wootware. Not only do they have a great selection of various products like the RGB RAM at fantastic prices, they also have amazing customer service that is truly world class. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to satisfy all your PC needs. Their link will be in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video on my RAM resurrection story. Be sure to hit that like button down below if it's helped you out at all. Also hit that subscribe button while you're down there if you're new around here. Also, I'm keen to hear, do you have PC component horror stories where you were eventually able to MacGyver your way out of them, the situation, not have to send them back for an RMA? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Brett with the UF Disciple channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.